Um, there are many disadvantages to working from home. Sometimes it's lonely, sometimes it's boring, and sometimes you get interrupted by couriers who are delivering biodegradable, environmentally free washing powder that Emily has bought for the fourth time this week. Uh, but there are also advantages, such as being able to work in your dressing gown slash robe when, um, when you're not feeling too good. I'm recovering from a, a pretty nasty bout of food poisoning, which is not particularly nice. And the more empathetic ones of you will be thinking, why are you recording a video when you clearly don't feel very well? Well, Emily and I get married in two days, and I think in about an hour's time, I'm going to be drafted in to start blowing up balloons or something. So this is the only chance I've really got to make a video and I've not made one this week and I, I've been promising this one for a while. So I, I thought I'd try and squeeze it in. Uh, so this is about editing, editing some of the photos that I took in Italy. I've not been through hardly any of them yet, to be honest, but the ones I have been through, I've, um, I've started to play around with the editing. And today what I thought I'd do is talk more about hopefully the why than the how I've done various bits of editing. There are thousands of videos, probably millions of videos on YouTube about how to do certain bits of editing. But today I thought I'd touch a bit more on the why. Uh, this video is sponsored by Lumix and all of the pictures that you see that I'm gonna show you were shot on uh, on this, the G9. So uh, yeah, here goes. Hopefully this makes sense. I'm, um, I'm already thinking straight at the moment. I've got quite a full mind with uh, food poisoning and marriage. Right, so the first image I'm gonna go through is one from the first day of our trip in Italy at Lago de Braise. Still not sure that's how you uh, say it, but what I did at this location was what I always do, which is uh, I end up posting a photo that's not the best photo of the 30 I took of any particular scene. So this one, for example, is uh, the one I much prefer, but actually what I ended up posting on Instagram and a couple of other places, I think, is, uh, is this one, an edited version of this one. They might look the same, but in this one, the rower hasn't got the oar in the water. And I think it looks a little bit better in this one where they have. Now, this image started off like this, and uh, I just made some subtle edits to make it look like this, and I'll go through those very quickly now. So, uh, the first thing that I did is applied one of my presets, uh, High Key Punch. If you don't know about my presets, they're free. I'll put a link in the description. Well, they're free if you sign up to my newsletter. You can unsubscribe straight away if you want. But uh, High Key Punch, and then it was October, so I wanted to make sure that the, the leaves looked a bit more October-ish. I was hoping that they would, but they clearly don't. So I'm gonna go to Hue, and I'm gonna take the oranges down. That's not really done much. Probably try the yellows actually. And that just turns the yellows a bit more orange. And I might do the same sort of thing with the green. Uh, now when you do this, you need to play around with your white balance also typically, because otherwise you end up with just a real nasty orange image. So that looks a bit better. The boat and the water look a bit more neutral now. So that's good. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I can sort of see at the bottom of this image, there's a real nice reflection that's being hidden at the moment because I uh, intentionally underexposed the photo by probably a couple of stops, to be honest. So if I just drag a gradient up and then increase the exposure there, you can see that that starts to bring back the um, starts to bring back the reflection. I'm going to up the saturation a bit to really bring that out. And the other thing I'm going to do is up the texture just to bring out the subtle ripples in the water. Um, just to sort of draw your eye to the, the reflection at the bottom of the photo. That also kind of shapes the um, the boat actually, because as you might be able to see, it's sort of sitting in this dark patch in the water. I think the whole image actually is underexposed a little bit at the moment. So if I just do that, then you might be able to see what I mean. But yeah, the, the boat is sort of just in the middle of this, this dark patch here, which I think looks quite nice. And uh, yeah, that is a photo that I'm, I'm now happy with. To be honest, it looks like that guy's struggling a bit, but I, I do think he, he made it back to shore. In fact, I didn't hear any alarms or anything that day, so he must have, he's fine. Okay, so the second photo is uh, is this one of Tom standing by the lake. I quite like the, uh, well, certainly the foreground of these sticks and stuff looks quite cool, and then the, the obvious reflection. Same thing again, really. I was hoping for more autumnal colors, so that's the first thing I'm gonna address. Again, using the high key punch preset, which is pretty much my go-to. Now, the first thing that does is make the sky look absolutely horrible. Now, the sky is pointless in this image because it's not particularly pretty. It's, uh, in some ways, it's, it's quite messy, actually. So the first thing I'm gonna do to that is go to luminance, and I'm gonna raise the luminance of the blue so that the sky becomes less distracting. 
Uh, I'm also going to just raise the exposure of this image just a touch, and then I'm gonna play around with the colors again by going back to hue, and then moving the yellow slider to the left, just to make sure that the colors look a little bit more autumnal. And that, is much better I think and I can obviously have a play with the colors from here I might want to put a bit of a vignette around the image um, something like that I don't know I'd have a bit of a play with that further the only other thing that I want to show you with this image though is that I think I'd probably have a play with the color of Tom's coat um, because sometimes I like to look at the color wheel when you've got a subject and a background that have got two very distinct colors or two very obvious colors if they're too similar then they can sort of clash and I like to separate those by using opposite ends of the color wheel in order to to help both of them stand out I'll show you what I mean in Photoshop so if I go into Photoshop now and pull up this image, you can see that Tom's coat is orange, but then the trees in the background are also orange, which is, well, that's no good. They don't really, um, they don't complement each other. So what I think I'd like to do actually is make Tom's coat a bit more of like a, a turquoise or something. Very easy thing to do. All I'm gonna do is create an adjustment layer, which is gonna sit above the image layer. So I'm gonna go saturation, and then I'm just gonna play around with hue until I get the color of the coat I want. All I'm paying attention to doing this is the color of Tom's coat and whether that's right. Okay, that looks pretty good. Obviously the rest of the image looks horrible. So over the uh, mask of the adjustment layer, I'm gonna go Command I, and then I'm just gonna zoom in. Not zoom out, idiot. I'm gonna zoom in and then I am gonna paint in white over Tom's coat with an appropriate size brush. Da -da -da -da. Something like that. I'm not gonna do a particularly good job because I'll bore you to death if I do this properly. But something like that. Now, a quick rookie mistake that a lot of people make is they forget to uh, pay attention to the reflection when they have reflections in their images and they make changes like this. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna make a change to the reflection too. So, not a very good change, mind. I mean, look at this. It's pretty crude. Still got orange bits all over the place, but you get the idea. Something like that, and I think that works quite well because it sort of complements the blue in the sky and the reflection, but they're quite far apart and you've got the orange that's closer to Tom, so I think that ties in the colour of the image much much more neatly. And uh, I mean, you can play around with the colour quite easily. Now that I've only got Tom's coat selected, you can go through all the colours, look. Ooh, yellow looks quite nice. Green, a luminous green, how about that? So yeah, you can do what you want. The advantage of having a, a bright piece of clothing in a photo. It's a big advantage. Okay, next image, again from uh, same location, Lago de Bray's, is uh, when the sun had gone down a bit and there was just lovely reflection and a lovely scene with these boats on the shore of the lake. It's quite a famous location. This is probably by no means a unique shot. Nevertheless, I really like it. And the thing that I want to pay attention to with this particular edit is cropping. So again, I'll just use one of my presets. Can't remember which one. Um, high key punch. I used high key punch again. It's kind of my go-to preset. Uh, so yeah, the thing that I want to pay attention to is cropping. Now, if you look at the original shot, I included quite a bit more. And also actually, one of the things I have done to this image, if I go to the before, is I've removed this rope up here. You might be able to see this rope. Um, that's just because it was a, a bit of a distraction. Some of the other shots that I got at this location, I kept the ropes because they, they look like a bit more of an integral part of the scene. In this one, it's just a nuisance. It's just sort of, it looks like it shouldn't be there. Anyhow, cropping. So as you can see, um, I shot this image with both a real light area up here and a bit of that area in the reflection. And I don't think you need both. Also, one of the things that I like to do when I'm cropping is I like to have uh, lines heading right into the corners of a shot. So I've got a couple of options to do that in this instance. I could try and get the top of this ladder right in the corner of a shot, like so. The only problem with doing that is that, as you can see, it cuts the boat off in this aspect ratio that I like to use for things like Instagram and uh, my website. So that's that's not really gonna work. I find that roughly four by three is pretty much my favorite aspect ratio, which works well because I use four by three cameras. But yeah, that's not gonna work with this ladder heading right into the top because it, it makes for quite a, an untidy cutoff point on, on this boat in this corner. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna experiment with the other side. And luckily this mountain top runs right into the corner, doesn't cut off this peak here, and it also cuts off this bit of sunshine, which I think looked a bit untidy anyway, especially given that we've already got that in the reflection. So that, 
I think, makes for a slightly nicer composition, just by a little bit of cropping. And uh, aside from that, yeah, the only thing I really did was was to apply one of my presets. As you can see, I've, I've played around with the cropping quite a lot on this image. Uh, now, like I said, there are some other photos where I think the rope works quite well. Um, this one, for example. Now, this rope, I think, kind of adds to the photo. It kind of makes this pier that I'm stood under look like a working pier, I think. It kind of, kind of adds to the story. So I, I wouldn't try and remove this rope. Uh, this one... I probably would, this one at the top, because it's not centred and it's just kind of, it looks a bit random, this dangly bit of rope. And you can't see where it comes from and therefore I think I'd, I'd just want to get rid of it. Because I think aside from that, it's, it looks like quite a clean image. So yeah, that rope just looks a bit of a mess. Okay, so this next photo, you might remember me banging on about quite a lot if you watched the, uh, the Italy vlogs. Basically, I was moaning at Tom because he didn't want to go and stand on the top of this rock. In his defence, he only had trainers on, it was quite a long walk, and nobody else was going there. So, I can't really blame him, I mean, it, it was a bit of a dramatic scene, and it was quite a long way. But, I was desperate to have somebody on the top of this rock, because I love having people in photos, because they're great at giving you a sense of scale, because everybody knows, roughly, what the size of a person is. And therefore, if you have a person in a shot, it can show you just how big a scene like this is, Obviously, if the person is is tiny. So I was desperate to find a person to have in the shot. I wasn't going to hang around until somebody decided to go and walk all that way. So I had to, I had to fake it a bit. Now, at pretty much the same place I'd seen this rock, I decided that I wanted a person to uh, to be stood on this rock, and therefore I was looking for opportunities to capture photos of people who are a long way away, who I could therefore add onto the top of this rock. And at said location, I found this photo and this person. And as you can see, they're sort of stood looking around at the scene. I thought they would be quite a good person to uh, to have at the top of this rock. Uh, so what I did is I took both of those images into Photoshop and I simply added the, uh, the person on top of the rock by means of uh, layer masking. As you can see, I just made that photo, the photo of the person much smaller and, uh, and then masked around the person to uh, to just include them. You might be wondering how I um, how I worked out how to get the scale right. Uh, and that was quite simple as well because luckily there's a um, there's a tree here. So I just sort of judged how big that person should be based on how big that tree was and I used that as the gauge for the scale of the person. Uh, also, I added a little blue hat onto the person which helps make the head stand out a bit otherwise it just looked like a, a coat on top of the rock. To be honest when you're looking at this image online or even if it's just not a massive print you probably wouldn't be able to tell but um, yeah I, I thought that was worth doing. Uh, now from there I just took the image back into Lightroom and again just had a play with the colours and, and this is what I came up with which I think looks quite dramatic and cool. Okay, now this photo is taken at probably one of my favourite locations ever. I mean, look at that scene, it's unbelievable. And uh, thankfully Tom was um, was kind enough to, to run back and forward and, and keep going to, to stand in that location because it meant I could take hundreds of photos and get one which was exactly as I wanted. Pretty much, I mean, I've had to make some further changes in Photoshop, such as, uh, well, as you can see, he stood on this sort of nubbin of a rock, which I thought looked a little bit more dramatic if I got rid of this bottom bit and just uh, just clone stamped over it. So that's what I've done. Ta-da! And I think just by doing that, it makes this, this rock down here that Tom stood on look a lot more dramatic and, uh, well, steeper, basically. I mean, if I bring that back, it doesn't look anywhere near as scary. If you get rid of that, I just think it looks a, a little bit more, bleh, whatever that means, I'm, I'm still a bit ill. Uh, the other thing that I did, and you might not be able to tell this unless I zoom in, is I extended Tom's legs, sort of, not to make him like a tall supermodel, but he was stood in this like bush, basically, uh, and I didn't go over there myself, so I don't know if there was somewhere better he could have stood, probably not in his defense, but uh, basically, I decided to uh, extend his legs by clone stamping and uh, make it look like he wasn't stood quite as much in a bush and therefore make it just look a, a bit more like a, a natural stance. It would have looked a bit odd if, it, if he was actually stood in a bush because um, it would have looked a bit staged. Whereas this, as I, I think you'll agree, does not look staged at all. 
Um, and the last thing that I did was I made some changes to the sky because as you can see, there's all kinds of weird distracting clouds. They're not that weird, but I wanted to uh, clean that up a bit. So all I did, and I've done this a few times before, is if you're uh, stood at a scene whereby you've got a bit of a distracting sky, a bit like how this was, um, all I do is I look around me to see if the sky anywhere around me is cleaner. And in this instance it was, I, um, I just took a photo that was pretty much 90 degrees to my left and then I added this photo on top of the original image and just uh, just used a gradient mask and some masking to uh, add that in and blend it to the original sky to make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, now I've spoken about replacing skies a lot in videos before and it even featured in my uh, overused techniques. I was moaning about people that replace skies all the time to make skies look a lot more dramatic. And so this definitely, to some extent, makes me a, a hypocrite, but I don't really mind replacing skies when you're taking away distractions. It's when you're replacing skies to make something look dramatic or more dramatic that I, I tend to have a problem with that. I don't know why that is and I don't know if that makes me, as I say, a hypocrite. It probably does, but uh, yeah, I think this sky replacement adds to the image. Uh, and again, before I made those changes in Photoshop, I just made similar tweaks to the, uh, the colour tweaks that I've shown you in other photos. So I think I applied a preset. Again, high key punch, popular for this video. And uh, so I underexposed this photo, as you can see, just to make sure I didn't lose any detail in the sky. The sky that I ended up replacing, which was a bit stupid in the end. But I applied a high key punch, changed the exposure and the temperature, and then did a few more local tweaks and, and that resulted. In that. Uh, so the last image I'm going to show you is this one of this very famous church at sunset. It was very nice. We've rushed to get to this location, as you'll know, if you saw the video. And uh, we got there just in time for sunset, which was lovely. The notable thing I think about this photo is that it's super high resolution. I used the high resolution mode on the G9 because uh, I had to set up on a tripod because the light was getting a bit low. And therefore I thought, well, I might as well get an 80 megapixel photo. If you don't know what the high resolution mode is, basically, clever technology the sensor moves by a pixel a number of times and then it stitches all those files together to give you a real high resolution file. Amazing technology, you have to use a tripod, which obviously I don't really like to do, but when I'm set up on a tripod anyway, I thought I might as well. Uh, now the only changes I've made to this file really outside of what we've spoken about previously is I'm not sure that I used a preset for this one. Interesting, but I've done similar color tweaks to what you've uh, what you've seen in the other photos. Now, these distracting elements in the image, uh, all the cars back here, uh, this building here, I did decide to get rid of, and I thought about also getting rid of this fence. Uh, but in the end, I decided to keep the fence. I thought the fence looked like a, I don't know, just a, a feature that, that kind of made the, the scene look a bit more, I don't know, natural. So yeah, amazing location. Imagine building a church there. And that is a video about why I, I made certain decisions and, and how I made some of them. And uh, hopefully it was useful because otherwise I've, I've wasted some time that I could have spent in bed recovering. Sorry, blowing up balloons for my, my wedding. Uh, yeah, there were loads more images from this trip. And if you found this useful, maybe I'll do another one in future from either this trip or, or future ones or past ones. You get the idea. But uh, but until then, I hope you enjoy playing around with some of the things that I've talked about and hopefully you've you've learned about. Um, yeah, please, please wish me luck for for this weekend. Actually, I'll already be married by the time you watch this. I'll have been married for a, a day. Hopefully she might change her mind. Thanks for watching.